Here's the deal. Pulled the valve covers off this 440 and noticed that a couple of the rockers had movement when you pushed on them. First I was like, great, flat cam. Then I'm like, wait a minute. It's not loose, it's actually collapsing the lifter with just the pressure of my finger. So I'm like, that's not gonna work. I made a couple of phone calls and I can't get a straight answer as to whether or not the valve springs will collapse or are supposed to collapse the hydraulic lifter. The general consensus is no, they're not. And they're definitely not supposed to be loose when they come back up. And so we have a problem. I gotta fix, it's gonna cost next to nothing and it's not gonna risk wiping the cam out by putting a new set of lifters on it that we don't know whether or not they'll break in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna dismantle the lifters, we're gonna clean everything really good, and then we're gonna build a couple of stops, three actually, three washers that are gonna fit inside the lifter and go between the plunger and the machine stop that's machined into the bottom of the, the lifter body itself, and they will prevent the lifter from collapsing any more than 30 thousandths. That gives us 45 thousandths at the valve, which is plenty for any lash or take up that the hydraulic lifter is supposed to do. So they should never really be running on the stop anyway. What that's gonna allow us to do is, before we pump these lifters back up and get oil in them, we're gonna go ahead and set the lash at 15 thousandths. That's gonna give us approximately 20 thousandths of preload in the lifter, which is about what you're supposed to have with stock lifters anyway. And if they don't stay pumped up, they're only gonna collapse 15 thousandths and it's gonna become a solid lifter and we're gonna have 15 thousandths of lash. Should run just fine like that. Here's the process of how we're gonna do it. We've already done 14 of these. I wanted to refine the process so that I could show you guys what I'm doing without fumbling around and, and so here's what we're gonna do. This lifter is, we've got two left. We get two tries to get this right. Pull the lifter out. As you can see on the bottom of the lifter, it's nice and shiny, it's not all galled up, it's not concave, which means that lifter is on a lobe and the cam's not flat, and that's why we're doing it this way. So once you have the lifter out, you take it over here to the bench. Odd thing that I found is on that side of the motor, none of these are collapsing. So what I've been doing is I've been able to collapse it with the push rod to get the clip out, but if you look in here, the clip is solid on one side and open on the other. You go to the open side of the clip, kind of hold the plunger down, and just work that clip out on that side and then you work the clip out on that side and then on the ones that collapse it's real easy to get this clip out this one's not going to work out so well so what i've had to do on these is i carefully bring it over here to my vise my vise is broken so you have to manually open it and then i lay my rag over here so we don't mess up the face of the lifter and we're not putting a ton of pressure on these we're just going to put a, a bolt in there that, that fits and doesn't get into the bottom where the push rod would seat in case we make a little mark on it. And we just put a little tiny bit of pressure and it'll squeeze some of the oil out. We're doing a little bit at a time so we can get this clip out. And then once you get it down a little bit, See the oil drip? You can get your little clip out and you wanna make sure you don't mess these clips up. And if you've ever worked on, I don't know, 80s cars with the door panel clips that go on the window crank, they call them Jesus clips because when you take them out, sometimes Jesus takes them. Well, <laughs> these are the same thing. I've been fortunate. I haven't lost one yet. Hopefully we can get the last two done without losing one. So then. Once you get the clip out, this is actually the push rod cup, the piece that the push rod sits in. And then inside here, this is your oil metering disc. And since this is a Mopar and it oils through the rockers, it doesn't have any holes in it. If you had a Chevy or a Ford, I imagine there'd be holes in there so it can oil through the push rods. I'm not sure about Fords. I'm Chevy, small block Chevy and big block Chevy for sure oil through the push rods. So then this is actually the, the plunger and you just, I've been pulling it with a pick carefully out till I can get a hold of it with my fingers. And there's the plunger. This in the bottom here is your check valve. That's what's supposed to hold the oil in the bottom, which this one had oil in it. That's the oil that we've been finding in some of them. This is the spring that forces the plunger up so it can fill with oil to take up the lash in the valve train. All we're doing is we're taking this and we're gonna clean all these parts and then I've got these washers that I've machined and I actually have to do some more because I don't have any small enough. When you get these washers from your local hardware store, this is just out of the grade eight bin, you buy them by the pound. They have 
different thicknesses. Uh, I don't know that they're supposed to, but I guess machining tolerances. And what I've been doing is I take my calipers and I got bags of these and I grab a few of them and I just measure them. And what I'm looking for is about 40, 54 to 50, 50 to 54 thousandths. That's 650 or 61 thousandths. That's too big. That one's 560. So we'll keep that one, which is 56 thousandths. 615, 645, 530. That's a good one. 625. And you could do this with 48 washers if you took your calipers to the store and you just bought thin ones. But as a bonus, all my washers are going to be the thick ones now. And sometimes I'll get six in a row that are the right size. This one's going to be a small one. I could feel it. And you could, if you can't find enough of the smaller ones, you could actually probably sand a couple thousandths off of it with a piece of emery cloth or something. But that just seems like it would take too long. And I've been able to find enough so far. If I run out, I may be doing that for the last lifter. So what we have here is a 7 16 bolt that I just took a file and knocked the tips of the threads off so these 3 8 washers fit over it pretty nice. If it'll focus. So then I just take 3 or 4 at a time and they slide over there and they fit pretty good and tight. And then 2 7 16 nuts that I ground down so they're smaller than the diameter that I want the washers to turn out. Put it on there. Tighten it up. And then I spin this the opposite way that my grinder spins. It's going down, this is going to go up, and I just keep this spinning the whole time, that way they stay nice and round. Sometimes you get a spot that just doesn't want to grind down, like that little high spot right there. And then I just take it and just keep it moving and try to tip, knock that high spot off. These don't have to be perfect. It's not a machine fit in there. That's hot. Those are also hot. Now that these are cool enough to touch, they're gonna have a little bit of a rough edge from where we ground them. So just put, this is 240 emery cloth. Let's put it on there and sand down one side, sand down the other side till that rough edge is gone. Do that to all of them. So then we just clean our lifters out and careful cause this will spray brake cleaner back in your eyes and it hurts. Once we have all of our parts clean, we go through and we measure our shims. Five sixty, that's going to be too thick. Five thirty five, five thirty five, five sixty. 535. We'll use those three. And as you can see, together we have 162 and a half thousandths. That's going to be about right. So then we're going to clean these off again. And then they're just going to go in the bottom of the lifter. So once this is in there, this is the stop. This is the face that usually hits the stop in the bottom. We're just going to put that right there and bring that stop up. So it only has about 30 thousandths to travel. And just drop them all in there, tap it, and if you, you're not going to be, I'm not going to be able to show this on the camera, but they're sitting down in there and made sure they're all nice and flat. Then the spring falls in and goes down in the center of them. Then after the spring's in there, we take our plunger, and we're not trying to fill the lifter full of oil. 
but we want some pre-lubrication on there. So we're just gonna take, I'm using the same oil I run in the engine, Rotella, Rotella 1540, and I'm just gonna rub a little bit of oil on the outside of this. And this is supposed to have a 50 millionths of an inch clearance. So you don't need much oil. Put it in there, turn it. And as you can see, now that we've cleaned everything, I can't even bleed the air out of those. So I think maybe they'll come back and be hydraulic lifters again. Take a pick and just carefully depress the check valve and they go right down. Then we take our oil metering plate, put that in there, make it so it sits flat. And I'm putting them all in with the little ridge down, but as I took them apart, they don't seem to have a way that they go. Put a little oil on your pushrod cup, put it in there and just turn, spread that oil around. Take your pushrod and you're gonna have to collapse the lifter. And the easiest way I found to get these clips back in is you put it in, put the solid side in the groove, put a little pressure against it, take a 90 degree pick, hook it under the edge, push it right down, put the other side in, and then just make sure that it's fully seated on both sides. Our lifter is rebuilt with a stop in it. So then what I do is I've got my dial indicator stand set up over here. Set the lifter down there, put the push rod in here, put it in the lifter, and you're gonna compress the rag, so you wanna pre-compress the rag, so you can see we're sitting on about 40, and this is really kind of a pain. And it takes some tries. What's happening is I'm not keeping it square enough for that plunger to stay inside that hole on the end of the push rod. So we're going from about 30 to 5 thousandths. So we got about 25 thousandths of travel there. We're gonna take this one apart and change one of the shims, try to get a little more. Now that our lifter's reassembled and has 30 thousandths of travel, we put a little pre-lube on it. Slide it back into the bore that it came out of, and these should just basically fall in there. I mean, they don't, they shouldn't have any resistance. You can see that one just kind of falls in there. And then I take my push rod and I get a little bit of oil on it, the end of it. And I don't know, it doesn't matter, but I like all my push rods to be facing the same way, so I put them all in the same way. I'm going to do the last one, and we're going to put this rocker back on. Bonus tip. If you're working on a dodge and you're trying to get all these push rods to line up while you're putting the shafts on, if you use a piece of wire on the rocker stands that holds them all up, uh, pretty sure I heard that from Uncle Tony. Rockers are on and all the shafts are torqued down. We can pull our wire out. Now that it's all put back together, you can see 15 thousandths fuel gauge fits in there pretty tight. Takes all the collapse out of that lifter. We now have a 15 thousandths solid lifter if it collapses and a hydraulic lifter if it doesn't. See you soon.